What's up guys? Factoring can be difficult. Factoring trigonometric expressions can be even more difficult. There's a lot of reasons why students struggle with factoring as well as simplifying trigonometric expressions. In this video, I want to go ahead and combine both of them by working through six different examples, helping you simplify six trigonometric expressions by factoring. I hope you're going to love this video. Click the like button down below if you agree and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first two examples that I want to work with you are going to be some basic factoring. Basically going to look at factoring the GCF and and using the difference of two squares. In this first example, a lot of students will say factoring the GCF, that was easy. But once you throw in cosines and sines, it becomes all difficult. So my idea of this is, well, let's use substitution. Why don't we go ahead and let x equal cosine of theta and let's let a number be sine of theta. Now you could obviously use a different variable like y for sine of theta, but I'm gonna use x just because I wanna go back to those good old days, or at least we had some numbers in our expression. Now, by replacing my cosine of theta with x and my sine of theta with three, I'm gonna have an equation that's gonna look something like this. And hopefully you recognize this that, oh yeah, I remember how to factor something like this out. Both of these expressions share an x and they're separated by subtraction. So therefore I can just factor out an x and that's gonna leave me with an x minus three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the exact same thing we're doing here. In this example, we share a cosine in both of these expressions and they're separated by subtraction. So using substitution, I can just replace my x with cosine of theta and my three back with a sine of theta. And now you can see that is going to be our final answer. Now in this next example, we could definitely simplify this using our Pythagorean identities, but my goal in this example was actually just to practice factoring. Anytime you see something squared minus something else squared, automatically think difference of two squares. It doesn't mean that's always going to be the right method that you need to take, but it should always be something that you consider. And the reason why looking at things in difference of two squares is because remember this relationship, a squared minus b squared can be factored down to an a minus b times an a plus b. And this is so important because it's so helpful and so quick to be able to factor out this expression. And since this follows that pattern, we can just say a equals a tangent of theta and b equals a secant of theta. So therefore, if I wanna write this in my factored form, I can simply just plug my tangent of theta and my secant of theta in for a and b. Now in the next two examples, I wanna introduce back to you the quadratic trinoma, which I know has given so many students so many headaches and so many frustrations for years and years. But the good thing about factoring trigonometric expressions, when you're first learning how to do this, most of the problems that you're dealing with are going to be rather easy to be able to factor. So if you remember anything about factoring quadratic trinomials, you already are in a pretty good spot. Okay, now in this first example, it might be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of expressions that are going on here, but there's also something that's pretty important. I have this expression, this expression, and this expression. What is common amongst all of those expressions? Well, it's the cosine of theta. So just like we did in the previous example, we can factor that out. And again, remember, you can always check your factoring out by just applying the distributive property back again. So if I divide out a cosine of theta here or factor out the cosine of theta, all I'm gonna be left with is a sine squared of theta plus a sine of theta minus a two. Now, hopefully you recognize at this point that this is a trinomial in a quadratic relationship. You have your function squared. Now again, I can always check my work by multiplying this back. And again, you would get back your original answer. But now what I wanna do is I wanna focus on what is inside of this parentheses because factoring quadratics, again, can be difficult. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the basics. I am going to let a sine of theta equal an x. So now if I have that to be the case, I can just rewrite what's inside this parenthesis as a x squared plus x minus two. Now, hopefully you can be able to factor this in your head. And if not, eventually we may want you to be able to factor this in your head. But the main thing is remember all quadratic trinomials can be written as a product of two binomials. And my first two terms are gonna multiply to give me x squared. My last two terms in this binomial are gonna multiply to give me a negative two. And this is great because I only have two options, negative two, positive one, negative one, and positive two. I want them to add to give me a positive x. So the only option that I have here is going to be a positive two and a negative one. And again, these last two numbers are gonna to multiply to give me negative two, and it's the inner and the outer which are going to multiply and then combine to give me this positive x. Now that I have this in factored form in terms of x, I can now just go back and replace every single x with a sine of theta. Now that was a pretty simple factoring problem and I know most students probably feel comfortable with something like that. And then once we start getting numbers in front of our coefficient, this is again where students start to freeze up because it's like this gets a little bit more difficult. I'm just gonna start right from the bat and just say, I'm going to let u equals a secant of theta. I don't wanna think about this in terms of secant of theta. I wanna think about this in terms of a variable that I can easily factor. 
Now, this isn't always the case when you have a four and a one for every trinomial, but you should always look to see if this is going to be a perfect square trinomial. And again, a perfect square trinomial can be rewritten as a binomial squared, basically a binomial multiplied by itself. And so if you test this kind of in your head, you can see that actually would work, but I'm going to show it to you so you can see exactly what I was doing in my head. This can be factored into a product of two binomials. Since it's a perfect square trinomial, those two binomials are exactly the same. Now, again, I need to get a four U squared. Well, if they're exactly the same, that's going to be a 2u and a 2u. And to get a 1, I need to multiply by a 1 and a 1. Well, my two options are a positive 1 times a positive 1 and a negative 1 times a negative 1. Well, since my middle term is positive, then both of these values both have to be positive as well. And again, we can always check our work by just multiplying our first and our last terms to go ahead and get the 4u squared and the 1, and then our middle terms and the outer terms to go ahead and multiply and combine to get of us our middle term. And hopefully you can see that this actually indeed works. And I can just simplify this to a 2u plus 1 quantity squared. But remember, we're trying to factor an expression in terms of secant of theta. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to now go back to my substitution and I'm going to replace my u with a secant of theta. And there you go. All right, and the last two examples that I want to cover with you are ones that students usually struggle with. Even if they have a good understanding of factoring, a lot of times they'll start making mistakes here because the factoring gets a little bit more difficult. Okay, again, let's cut right to the chase. I don't want to be dealing with trying to factor things in terms of cotangent of X. What I'm simply going to do here is I'm going to say, let's let U equal the cotangent of X. So now if I want to rewrite this in terms of U, I have a two U squared plus a three U plus one. Now it's important to remember that all quadratic trinomials can be written as a product of two binomials. So the first thing I'm always going to do is just go ahead and write this out. Now this is not a perfect square trinomial like the last example because two is not a square number. However, if my first two terms are going to multiply to give me a two U squared, well, I have a two U and a positive u. Now my last two terms again need to multiply to give me a positive one. So I have positive one, positive one, and negative one times negative one. But again, if my middle term is going to be positive, then these two terms also both have to be positive because a positive plus a positive is always going to be a positive and a negative plus a negative will always be a negative. So therefore I can just add a one into both these factors. And now you can go ahead and see that this is the factored form. And again, just going back to my u substitution here, I can now just replace all of my u's with a cotangent of x to be able to get the final factored form that I was originally looking for. Now in this last example, you can see that I have cosecant raised to the fourth power. Well, we haven't done anything factoring to the fourth power. So again, to avoid any kind of confusion, I'm just going to get rid of the cosecant of y by again using my substitution. I'm just going to say, let's let x equal a cosecant of y. And again, you can use any variable you want. Now when I'm doing that, I get a x to the fourth minus a 2x squared plus one. Okay, now this is going to be a trinomial, but it's not quadratic. So what I want to do now is still follow the same process, but just raise the factors. So I know I'm going to have a product to by binomials. I know to get an x to the fourth, I can have a x squared times a x squared because x squared times x squared equals x to the fourth. And then to get my last term a positive one, I could use a positive one and a positive one, but notice that my last term is now negative. So therefore I'm going to want to use a negative one and a negative one. Now, the important thing is to make sure that your middle term is obviously going to add to a negative 2x squared. Since these are the same power, I can go ahead and combine them. So you can see my inner and my outer, when multiplied and combined, is going to give you a negative 2x2 squared. So now I can just go back to my substitution and replace my x with a cosecant of y. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is six different examples to help you factor your trigonometric expressions. I hope this video was helpful. If you really love this video, feel free to leave me a comment, like, or a super thanks. You can check more examples of factoring trigonometric expressions in my playlist down below, or go ahead and watch the next video I have for you here. Cheers.